It is our first morning having pinned up mama, kept baby separate all night. So we are going to get a full milking on the stand this morning and mama is ready. She is letting the whole world know she is not happy. So, I'm going to get these other goats fed and move her to the stand and see how it goes. <laughs> just realized that the goat that I was keeping in with the mom last night is out. So apparently we need to work on our our chain situation. Come here baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This way. Come on this way. Come. Come on. Gotta get up. Come on, Mama. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. So you can see our utility cart converted into a milk stand here. I will give a little closer view of that for those of you who might be interested in something like this. This was um, perfect for us because we don't have a designated milking space just yet so this is something that I can roll around, wheel around, and um, find a, a good spot for. Such a good girl. She really is. We got lucky. baby. Go on, Mama. Okay, so she had ran out of grain and started getting a little bit, a little bit freaked out and flighty. So I decided to let baby in for just a few minutes. We're in no hurry to get a ton of milk from her, so We'll do it as comfortably as possible. So 
So that was halfway successful. And honestly, for the first morning of keeping her separated from baby, and really only the second morning of trying her out on this milk stand, I'm not surprised. She still did really well. Um, I learned some things to take away for tomorrow and beyond, and that is to definitely have more food in her bucket for her to eat because she ran out of food pretty quickly and then was ready to get down. So um, that's one thing. And then second thing, I need to make sure that the wheels on this stand are good and secure. Um, it wasn't a problem with her up there. It didn't move and didn't shift or anything, but once the baby hopped up there with her, it did start to roll a little bit. Um, which I don't plan on the baby being on the stand with her being a normal thing. So, um, but still just for good safety measures, make sure that the stand is not going to roll anywhere. Um, those are some things I learned the first morning. Other than that, I feel like it was pretty successful. So we'll keep going. We'll keep trying. Her bag is still probably about halfway full this morning. So we'll just let baby kind of get what she wants the rest of the day out of there. And that's it. We'll try again. The really good part about us bringing both mom and baby here, which was part of our plan, was that, you know, if things like this happen, if we couldn't milk her out completely in the morning, because um, we're new to this and she's new to this, um, that baby can just kind of finish the job for us and we can kind of learn together and do it slow and easy um, and as less stressful as possible. So I'm happy with the way this morning's milking went and I think it's just going to get better the more that we do it, the more that she gets used to it, the more that I get used to it the routine and now I finally have enough milk to make a batch of goat's milk soap so that's exciting hello sunshine we have been without sunshine for months it feels like so this morning is absolutely glorious
The sun is out today, finally, after weeks, weeks and months of rain. So we are feeling extra cheery today and have really just been sitting on the back porch soaking up the sun, enjoying the Elks. animals, <laughs> yep, and just taking it easy. It's been a good day so far, but now it's time for lunch and we are in our sunny, cheery mood and one of our favorites in the summertime <laughs> is a tomato sandwich. And yeah. these are the tomatoes that we typically grow in our garden, which are Cherokee, tomatoes, Cherokee purple tomatoes. They are an heirloom variety. We grow them because they're very prolific and they're also less acidic, which is um, a little bit better on our digestive tracts. If you're from the South, you know that a tomato sandwich is a staple of the South. Maybe you don't know, but now you know. We're going to show you how we like to do ours. Most people will use just simple white bread, a tomato, mayonnaise, salt and pepper. Some people put sugar a little bit. We typically go for a little bit healthier options. So we have some sprouted grain, flourless bread. This is Ezekiel bread. Um, we do have, you know, not great quality mayo, but this is what they had whenever we went to the store last. Usually I get a little bit better quality. We like to add lettuce, avocado, um, sometimes microgreens, sometimes pickles, sometimes cheeses. Wait, do we have pickles? We do have pickles. I want pickles. Go get pickles. I want pickles. Cucumbers, you can add bell peppers. During the summertime, this is just a quick, delicious, easy way to eat up some of your vegetables and eat them raw so you still get all the good vitamins and nutrients from them. And we just really love it. So we're both gonna make our own sandwich and make them a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin the lettuce. Yes. Yes. We actually got these tomatoes and this hydroponic lettuce. We got this tomato and this hydroponic lettuce from our local farmer's market. We are not growing these just yet, though we do have seeds in the ground for our lettuce, so we are patiently awaiting those, and we'll be starting our tomato seeds in the next couple days. I actually made an Amazon order for a cart for our seed trays, and I'm going to show you how we organize that um, in the next couple days, so stay tuned for that. Ooh, this looks good. Just cut our tomato in big, thick slices. Oh, my mouth's watering. <laughs> Mine's been watering for a long time. Hungry, hungry. I know. All right, so I'm going to jazz my mayo up just a little bit and add a little bit of lemon juice and some capers. I like the extra little bit of zest, especially with um, tomatoes and that sort of thing. It's just fresh and... Got good flavor. Reagan's gonna go for the traditional mayo. So I'm just gonna put probably about half a tablespoon of mayo, maybe a teaspoon worth of lemon juice, and then, and then maybe about a teaspoon of capers. Mix them all together. Some people don't like mayonnaise. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Probably not from the south. <laughs> it's a southern thing. It's a southern thing. So. We do have some sourdough starter, and we're looking forward to making our first loaf of bread. So you've waited so long. Yeah, I've been procrastinating. I'm going to add some lettuce. Ooh, this looks good. Pretty lettuce. Mm. Hunk of tomato. Hmm, I think I'm going to do my avocado next. On this area. 
Oh, it's like the perfect avocado. <gasps> it is. Even the avocados are happy today. <laughs> but this needs to be good. I do very, very, very white pepper because I don't want any black pepper. I will take like two, maybe three. Yeah, I'll take like that many. Just know that that if you eat this sandwich and don't get messy, you didn't do it right. Yeah. You have to do the lettuce first on the mayo because the mayo acts like glue and keeps the lettuce down. And put a little sprinkle of salt. Oh, I forgot my salt. My hands are getting so messy. Mm, yeah. A little bit of pepper. Oh, Jesus. I just put the salt on. Here we go. Lettuce. Looks delicious. So here is our cart converted into a milking stand. We've had this utility cart for about two years now. It is a gorilla cart. Um, it has been a lifesaver for so many trips. From the front yard to the backyard as you can see the the walls come off on it if you need it to it's very heavy duty tires the arm on it is very sturdy we've carried our entire chicken coop and goat shed to the backyard from the front yard with this cart so it is very sturdy um, so we just bought this headpiece from Premier One, I believe it was $85 or so, and just secured it with these, these U screws and plates. And so our goat just hops up on the stand, puts her head inside of the, the neck piece here, we put food into the bucket, and then we just close it like so to the, the size of her neck there. And that is it. So far so good. I really like this setup. I can roll it in and out of our shed. And we can milk over here in the compost area or inside of the goat stall itself. I find I like to separate her in the morning from the other goats just because it gives her a little more privacy she doesn't feel so rushed to finish her food even though she does eat it super fast and finishes like you saw in the video earlier um, I like this stand the only thing that I would change about it is on the actual headpiece itself this feeding bucket here doesn't completely um, tilt up so the food does get trapped in there so I'm gonna have to you know pick it out by hand and maybe use a blower or something and blow it out if it gets caked up or dirty but this was a relatively cheap and easy way to make a stand and we didn't really have the extra time to make one right now so um, this was something that we could piece together really quick it's convenient and we really like it so I don't know that this will be our permanent solution for milking once we get to the new property we might build an actual um, milking parlor area if we really enjoy milking goats or other animals um, so we'll see about that but for now at this homestead it works really well once it's a little bit darker we're gonna close <laughs> the goats just broke their little dog house I knew that was coming <laughs> once, once it gets a little bit darker, um, we're going to pit Mama in her stall tonight. We're going to try a different goat that can't squeeze out of the little hole and try to milk again in the morning. 
knowing the couple of things that we need to do differently. We'll take those into account and hopefully be a little bit more prepared in the morning and have a little more success. So it's a learning process. We're excited to do it and we'll see how it goes. But for now, that's it. We'll see you on the next video.